For those of you, for those of us who don't know what Auto One does, I definitely am not 100% sure, and we've never been to NOAA and seen a presentation. Can you maybe say a few words about what you guys do? No, well, sure. Auto One is a Berlin-based company uh, founded in 2012, and today the biggest platform where car trade happens. Um, through a consumer sourcing approach where we see over a million uh, consumers a year in our branch network and through a B2B distribution approach that, um, uh, where 25,000 dealers are part of the network. Short, concise. Yes. Yeah. Some founders <laughs> like to talk about their businesses uh, a lot publicly, but Auto One has not been one of those companies. I guess uh, you presented it at NOAA for the first time uh, last year presented some numbers. Is there anything that you can share this year about uh, how 2016 has been? Um, I think we've shown them this year in, uh, in, in Berlin and we are going according to plan. Yeah, everything's great. That's good. good to know. <laughs> uh, so um, you've built what is rumored to be quite a big business in, in a very short time. There's, there are a lot of entrepreneurs in the audience, I guess, or some entrepreneurs who are thinking, how can I in four years be sitting on stage in NOAA being interviewed by a partner in one of Europe's best growth funds? Target Global, for those who didn't catch the name. Um, what is the one piece of advice that you would give them? Uh, one piece of advice? I think uh, laser sharp split of responsibilities. Uh, You'll see my co-founder sitting here somewhere in the audience, and I think the, the anecdotal story how we came to, I mean, he's not sitting here, because we were looking at competitors in the car market and driving somewhere in the east of Berlin, and got stuck in the way back in a traffic jam. And it was horrible, and it took like an hour, and we were hungry. And we said, we never want to be stuck in one car. It's super inefficient. One guy could have stayed in the office and actually worked. So, um, and when there's a lot of mutual trust and that everybody does what he does best and you don't have to challenge it, you have double firepower. And I think that's, uh, and if you're a young team and you don't have endless resources, uh, the only way to leverage every single head 100% is that everybody trusts each other and there's no overlap. That's a very German phenomenon, having two MDs in one company, two, two CEOs. How does that work for you? Do you ever, uh, do you ever clash? No. Perfect harmony, a great marriage. <laughs> yeah, when um, you have a lot of children, the marriage has to be intact. Yeah, about, uh, about 3,000 children, right? Roughly. Um, I guess the last year has been, some people have said, has been a bit, a bit soft. On funding, on the market has been a bit soft. How has that affected you? I mean, I think it would be a lie to say that it hasn't affected anybody. Uh, uh, in fact, I've seen I've seen a speech from, from Jamie Dimon where he was telling about how he saw the market and the numbers in the end of January, beginning of February, and he was so upset because it didn't have anything to do with the real actual company um, um, that he was leading. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs had the feeling, why is there something that I don't have under control and why is it affecting actually the whole ecosystem? Um, I think we didn't have to go out um, and race. We had done a lot of other homework. We have a, a, another structure. We actually do have a lot of balance sheet. Um, and we had, um, we, have just, we had just increased in that time our, our working capital lines uh, and, and, and bank loans. So we, we didn't really have a liquidity need that time, luckily, of course. But um, of course, it makes you think would have, what would have been if not or what if the market never comes back into actually, um, if you want, so uh, growth investments. And um, then you have to, um, yeah, you have to have a plan B, I think. And when you look at the companies over the last seven, eight months um, that have adapted to that, I think it was a, it was a um, yeah, actually a good moment so everybody could focus on uh, what happens if there's no endless uh, pocket of growth capital. That's true. It is, uh, I think you can always fundraise, right? We've been a part of a couple of uh, joint deals this year, and uh, good teams always fundraise, even in, uh, in tougher times. No, exactly. I mean, at the end of the day, if, if the plan is right and the team is right and the company is right, there will always be 
um, a, a pocket of, uh, of money and, and yes, we have some um, s small investments and then they're great teams and, and they would have been able to raise in any term, but I think it's important for the ecosystem that um, yeah, people can also stay calm and know that, uh, that uh, it's not, it doesn't really have to do with how your company is doing day to day. Uh, and if that is increasing and getting better and better, who cares if you want so about the market as long as you're not in the point where you need to raise. Yeah. So, so you said something about balance sheet. And, and just going back to that, I, think, I guess AutoOne is an unusual company for a fast-growing internet company in the way it's portrayed publicly. But it's really two businesses. Half of it is, or a part of it, is an internet company. And a part of it is a brick-and-mortar business with people in... Uh, not in hard hats, but in, in garages with grease on their hands and iPads. Um, how do you make those two work together? How do you keep the culture aligned? I mean, as you said, these people are working with a lot of tools. The processes are all digital. I could, uh, I, I could get out my MacBook out here and we could watch in real time um, whether we are looking at or buying uh, or selling in a car. So, it is not an uncoupled, if you want so, brick and mortar business. It is a fully integrated part of our value chain that has actually the advantage that you have a real contact with your customer. And, uh, and for us, it's very valuable. I mean, think about that we have consumer, individual consumer contact with over a million individuals every year. Yeah? And this is not website clicks, these are actual people. And, uh, and, and, and so, this is very, very valuable. And when you look at, these are also always new individual consumers because you don't sell your car every year. So statistically, you can always target for the same conversion or penetration rates for any other product that you want to, uh, want to offer them. Yeah? And for that's, a, that's a great flow of business. So you're giving free coffee to a million people a year. So that's right. It sounds expensive. Yeah. No, it's a, it's a great investment. I think the ROI on free coffee is, uh, is phenomenal. Have you ever thought about dropping the physical part of the business? Have you ever looked into it? No, I mean, uh, physical is, uh, is, uh, is the backbone of what we're doing. Um, uh, um, we love our business as it is. Yeah? Can you enhance it? Of course. Can you build a, an extension and virtual branch approaches? Of course. But um, it's a great business, a profitable business. and. Um, yeah, it helps us to grow as we grow. So, I guess uh, talking about the future, as our uh, president Lex says, a lot of people have been saying that autonomous cars will change the world of transportation. And how do you think that will affect you going forward? I mean, the question is, of course, the perspective. Uh, when will this happen? What will exactly happen? Who will own the cars? And at the end of the day, when you look at trillion euro car parks, even if a car has a function that it can drive autonomously, why would anybody consolidate it under one balance sheet? Uh, if we think that these cars will drive a lot more, if they go from 5% utilization to 90% utilization, then these cars will depreciate. Uh, there will be a lot of wear and tear. So it's not a better reason for any bank in the world and any risk officer to say, I actually want to take all of Europe on my balance sheet. Uh, when you look historically, how car trading, franchise dealership, and, and retail loan market has developed, and the auto consumer loan is more than 50% of the whole loan market in Europe, then the idea is always to have a fragmented balance sheet approach and always have the last mile, if you want so, with the last owner and, and, and have a, a cheap infrastructure to refinance them because he's in, in recourse. So, uh, I mean, it's a lot of wild guessing because it's years and years ahead until that changes. But I think the OEMs will help you utilize your asset. So you will still own the Mercedes. And if you don't want to drive it all day long, there will be networks and value propositions where you can make your Mercedes work for you and actually uh, bring back some money uh, that it's costing you. But what I don't think is that there will be one bank that says all of Europe's cars are on our balance sheet. So do you think that Auto One can also leverage the financial side? Because a lot of uh, companies in, in the auto space have been making money off of financing rather than buying and selling cars. Do you think that Auto One can go into that business at some point? Or will it? Or is there something that you want to tell us uh, <laughs> that you haven't told? 
publicly, said publicly yet? Uh, no, there's nothing <laughs> that I've said publicly. <laughs> but let me tell you this. It's, uh, of course, part of the, uh, of, of the bigger value chain. It is very high ticket items. Um, we control um, that chain. We have a great relationship with our dealers. And of course, we're looking into what the right solution is to actually make it life easier for them operationally. So it's not only who lends you money and why, um, because that is a commodity, and that's the challenge for banks. What is my real USP? And just leveraging balance sheet is not a USP. But if you can integrate with a platform that helps both sides of the transaction, or at least one side of the transaction, to significantly be more capital efficient, and capital efficient means not the capital that you lent them, but actually the equity that they have to bring into their business, um, then you actually have a real value proposition. And uh, um, without going too much into details, we're working on solutions um, um, for that. And I think we'll have a phenomenal offering for car dealers in Europe. Yeah, I hope that next year, this time at NOAA, uh, you'll be able to say uh, a few more words about that and uh, maybe uh, say a little bit more about the business. Where do you hope uh, to be next year? I think, um, again, on track, to be honest. Yeah. Um, we, we, we're having a good time. We are happy with what we're doing. It's still a lot of fun. I think that's also um, an important point. Yeah? If after four years, five years, you still come to the office and say, there's so much to be done, and not, oh, there's so much to be managed. And, uh, and uh, yeah, we're in for the long run. And uh, yeah, next year, we want to be on track. We want to show um, uh, what we've done, also in the, perhaps in the financial um, uh, industry. And uh, yeah, perhaps we have a credit card with Marco's face on it. Let's hope. Thank you very much. Thanks.